Hey, what's happening YouTube? Your friend to the 1X Factor, and today I'm doing some overclocking on my GTX 1080. This is the EVGA for the win edition. Now, I usually run an SLI setup, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and overclock a single card just to keep things nice and simple. Keep in mind that anytime you do any kind of overclocking, you do so at your own risk, so this is not meant to be a tutorial or any kind of guide, but just a demonstration on my overclock and my results and what I did to achieve my overclock clock now the tools that i'm using to overclock is msi afterburner to control all my settings for core memory and whatnot i'm using gpu z to verify my settings and we're using the heaven benchmark now the things that you see on screen from top to bottom of course you see your frame counter then you see your gpu utilization anywhere between 90 to 100 percent your boost clock it is boosting at 1962 out the box without me touching anything it's at 68 degrees celsius you see your memory information with a fan setting at 72 percent right now your cpu and your power that it is drawing from the wall now anytime i do any kind of overclocking the first thing i do is i go ahead and raise my power limit all the way and my temperature limit is linked to power limit then i hit apply and the reason i do that and it's not necessarily necessary on this card but it's to help uh limit any kind of thermal throttling that we might experience what happens as your card warms up those boost clocks will tend to drop a little bit to keep the card cooler now the for the win edition i believe its core clock is 720 and the boost is 1860 so gpu boost is automatically giving me a 100 megahertz boost clock without me doing anything which is great now what i usually do is on my core clock i usually start at around 50 megahertz i feel that's a good starting point and i start raising in 10 megahertz in, in intervals and i just let that run and make sure i don't have any driver crashes or any kind of you know spots or any kind of artifacts on screen now since i've went ahead and tested my card i know where my limit is so i'm going to go ahead and go to 120 boost on the core clock and we'll hit apply and you'll see that boost up to 2088 now i've had this program running for about a good hour now so my temperatures are set to where they were going to and that's probably where i'm going to see it at 69 degrees celsius and anytime you start raising the core clock and voltages and stuff like that remember you start putting more heat into your system for my memory i usually go ahead and start right at around where the core clock is so for example i would go 120 on the memory and then i will let that run i would hit apply and you'll see the boost automatically there to 51 30 megahertz on the memory now what i do with memory i start going up in 50 megahertz intervals on the memory and i look for any kind of artifacting anytime you run your overclock too high on your memory you're going to see like blotches on your screen almost like sunspots or or you'll see color wheels or something like that then you know your memory clock is too high now i personally find that overclocking memory isn't real beneficial so if i get to double the core clock on the memory clock if i get to the double the number then I, I usually feel pretty good about that but um i know i can get to 300 pretty easily so we'll go ahead and hit 300 megahertz on the memory core clock and we'll see that boost up instantly to 5301 now what i do when i'm testing i let this run and i just let this run for example if i know my core clock is unstable at 125 then i go ahead and dial back to 115 or 5 to 10 megahertz below now if you wanted to try to get to 125 or 130 you could but you know it's not stable then you could raise your voltage by adding more voltage to your car you're adding more power and wanting to hopefully stabilize that now again i stress this guys anytime you do overclocking it is done at your own risk so raising the voltage is going to add more heat to your card so make sure you have adequate cooling or it's staying cool enough but for the purpose of this video let's go ahead and raise the core clock to uh, core voltage to 60 percent and i personally don't usually raise voltages i don't feel a need that it's gonna make that much of a difference on that different of 10 megahertz on my core clock but just for the video demonstration we'll go ahead and boost it up 60 percent on the core clock and we'll go ahead and hit check mark and you'll see a small boost in my boost clock here we go 2101 
so I just let this run for at least an hour or two. Now keep in mind, different games might not be stable with your overclock, so sometimes these profiles are real helpful as you know, one game might work great with your overclock and another game might not, or one game might have a higher tolerance. I don't know, it, it, I, that's just been in my experience. But let's go ahead and hit benchmark and let's see what happens. Let's see if we keep it at 2101 for the whole benchmark. So let's we're benchmarking and we'll just wait for it to run all the way through. Now, when you're running an SLI setup, for example, see it already dropped down to 2088. So that 60 core cloud really wasn't beneficial, but it might be beneficial in helping to keep the core clock stable at say 125 or 130. Now, when running the SLI, as I was saying, usually what I like to do, me personally, is I will do an overclock on each card individually. So I'll put one in the first slot, overclock that, run it a couple of days, see if it's stable. Then I'll switch the cards around, put it on the top slot again, run it in single mode, overclock that, run it a couple of days and see if it's stable. That way I know where both cards are pretty stable at and then I can run an SLI overclock and kind of go with the lowest setting that you got from the lowest card overclock and see if it's stable at that. Since we're at 2088, let's go ahead and give it an extra 65%, uh, an extra 5% on the voltage and see if we can get that back up to 2101. Let's try it. Nope, still 2088. So this is why we benchmark. So since we're adding some voltage, let's go 125 on the core clock and let's see if we can get that to 2101 enter and then hit apply let's see what happens so there you have it guys it's at 2088 now I could keep playing with it I could keep raising that core clock and the voltage to see if I could get it up there but I personally don't find the need uh, to, to really have to push my cart that way I don't like risking it even though it is at 71 degrees Celsius it's real stable on my temperature so you'll see it at 28 2088 on the core clock. Now I have done some extreme testing on the card and I know I can get it to 2101, but for the purpose of the video and to make sure it don't crash, we're gonna keep it right where it's at. So what are we on right now? But you see it's stay about 2088 and I'll take 2088. I don't have to see 2101 or 2100. It doesn't make me feel any better. My card is not good. What is it gonna give me an extra frame? Maybe an extra one or two frames per second. Not necessary for me guys. See the card is running nice and cool at 70 degrees Celsius. So I will take this all day. And we're almost done. We're on scene 22 of 26 right now, 23 of 26. Well guys, there you have it, my live demonstration of my overclock of my EVGA GTX 1080 for the win edition. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of results you guys got and what settings you used to achieve them. All in all, if you have the card, congratulations. I know you're enjoying it. 
Until next time, guys, your friend the 1X Factor. Make sure you guys like the video, leave me a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel for more gameplay videos, more benchmarks, more, more of everything, hopefully. So, talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.